It's this place that's both completely natural and completely man-made. It's always been a reckless place, and it's always been a pleasure place. It was always a tourist attraction, a place that you had to get to, away from life. It's always been the end, right? Here we are at the end. I mean, I think I'm always attracted to real stories. Real stories are often a jumping off point for me. And there's so much beautiful historical writing about Coney Island. I read this Rem Koolhouse book called Delirious New York. And in that book is where I first heard the story about the fire in 1911. And I saw that image of this fire of dreamland. I thought there must be a plane here somewhere. I thought that the play would be a historical play, and in a way, I'm not sure it is anymore. Or if it is, it's a historical play about 2013 when Superstorm Sandy happened here, that that history became as important as the history of 1911. The impact of Sandy on this community, the destruction and rebirth, it's a huge part of the ethos of the play. The way that Coney Island is America in this way, and that vision of how we can reinvent ourselves and how we can make this craziness on a spit of land is part of what the play's about. This is where the first scene takes place, with a woman who's on the boardwalk feeling disconnected to everything that gives meaning to her life. And she meets a guy who feels like utterly connected to everything meaningful in life. And the story is about what happens when she takes his hand and says, okay, I'm with you, leave me somewhere else. 